We need the snow to fly. We need cold weather and snow. We'll seal this deal. Hey guys, welcome to DIY Retriever Training with Long Hollow Outdoors. I'm Ryan Fortier. This series of awesome retriever training videos that's gonna help you train your own dog is being brought to you by my good friend Matt Tuttle down at Copperwood Kennels, our good friends over in Spokane, Washington with Pacific Calls, our buddy Bob Owens way out on the East Coast with Lone Duck Outfitters, and our friends down in Llewellyn, Nebraska, Grant and Sherry Hatch with Big Cottonwood Retrievers. I hope you guys had a good hunting season and you're looking forward to seeing our show this next fall uh, that's going to air on the Hunt Channel through Apple TV, Roku, and Amazon Fire. Make sure you check in with us periodically on Facebook, Instagram, or on our website. Um, we'll try to make uh, regular updates about broadcast dates and things of that nature. Um, but in the meantime, let's get out and, uh, and train our dogs. The rain's starting to fall here in Ellensburg, so uh, spring is here. Hopefully soon the water will be warming up, but in the meantime, there's plenty that we can do with our puppies. Um, a lot of us have new puppies. We have a brand new puppy here. His name is Cannon, um, brought to us by Big Cottonwood Retrievers down in Llewellyn, Nebraska. Um, so far, this puppy has turned out to uh, inspire me to get back into the field, which is exciting, as well as my good buddy, Blake Gibson, who I hunted with all this hunting season. And uh, the kid just blows up my phone day in and day out to get out and train dogs, and I think it's about time we made it happen. In volume one, we're gonna talk about early development. A lot of pro trainers don't wanna take the puppies in until they're about five, six months of age when their baby teeth have fallen out and their adult teeth are growing in. Uh, being a pro myself for years, um, I get it. But if you wanna have a real well-rounded retriever, um, training starts the day you get it home. At eight to 10 weeks of age when that puppy gets home, it is so impressionable and, uh, and that is the moment when you can really start ingraining a lot of good habits. Um, you'll hear me talk about preventative medicine. Dogs are creatures of habit and uh, as, as they get older the training process becomes much simpler if we're not breaking habits we're just continually developing good ones. We're gonna focus on the four main things that you should be focusing on when you do get your puppy home. Um, starting with crate training, um, developing your puppy's retrieving instincts and then going into socialization and we're gonna talk about teaching your puppy limits. The main reason for crate training is to help you with potty training. It's important to understand that dogs are place oriented and they have an instinct to not necessarily want to go to the bathroom where they sleep. So if you develop that habit right from the beginning, you're going to have a much more enjoyable time raising your puppy. So your puppy should sleep in the crate at night and you should find time for it to spend plenty of time in the crate during the day as well. Creating some kind of structure and pattern so that you know how much you're feeding your puppy, how much water he's drinking, um, and when he has to go to the bathroom, you can let him out of the crate and he can go straight outside. The more organized and structured you are with it, um, the easier it will be on your puppy. In turn, the easier it will be on you. Another aspect of uh, potty training that's really important is to understand that dogs sometimes will drink a lot of water just because they're bored. So make sure you're not uh, just leaving water out to them all the time, free to drink whenever they want. A better practice to just uh, give them water when you feed them as well as offer them water uh, throughout the day periodically just to make sure they're not thirsty because they sometimes will drink more water than they need which will make potty training harder for you. Socialization. Um, this concept uh, really should be throughout the dog's life but it starts right when you get it home. It's important to develop a young puppy that's comfortable in his skin. There's, he's going to deal with a lot of introductions pretty soon when it comes to um, chasing down his first bird and dealing with gun breaking and then dealing with the pressures of uh, formal training. It's important to have a dog that's very confident and like I said, comfortable in his skin. That comes through exposing them to as many sights and sounds of being a retriever as possible right from the beginning. You can take him for long walks uh, with the other dogs, let him be a puppy, find time to turn him loose in the field, uh, out in the woods and running through the water and um, chasing birds and chasing butterflies and, and uh, just being a dog. That's important. It's also important to find time to teach him to walk on a leash and you know walk through town and hear the sights and sounds of cars and um, sirens and people and kids and everything else. Use your imagination, be creative, and develop a social puppy. 
Now sometimes too much socialization and not enough training can lead to a puppy that's uh, a little overwhelming. This is where uh, the real training process comes in in teaching your puppy limits right from the get-go. Your puppy needs to understand it has a place in your pack and that you're the leader. That you decide when he eats and that you decide when he sleeps and you decide when he retrieves. He gets corrected for getting in the garbage and he gets corrected for chewing on your shoes. We can do things like teaching him to sit and stay right from the get-go. Um, teaching him to sit as we uh, set his dog food down in front of him and make him stay and use some kind of release word like okay to tell him when uh, it's okay to eat or when we're going outside and walking through the door make sure that he s sits and stays until you walk through the door and then you call him through these training exercises like making him wait to eat his food or making him wait to come outside um, are just a part of teaching the puppy to look to you for leadership. You'll hear me talk a lot about trainability in a dog. I think that uh, some of that is instinctual, but some of it is also developed. You can develop a young puppy right from the beginning that looks to his master for leadership. And that can be a trained exercise by doing the right things when you're a puppy and creating that structure, teaching limits. And this process starts right when you get him home. Okay, we talked briefly about crate training, socialization, and teaching your puppy limits. Um, all of which is not that fun sometimes, but uh, it leads us right into the next focus point um, and that is developing the retrieving instinct to your puppy. Hopefully you got a nice little puppy that's bred well and uh, has a lot of instinct to want to chase down and retrieve things. If that's the case, the main focus is uh, developing that instinct to get whatever object it is that you throw and have the puppy bring it back to you, obviously. Um, a lot of people struggle with that right in the beginning because they get out in a big open field, they throw a bumper or, or a ball or whatever it is, and the puppy runs and gets it and then just runs all over like a madman and doesn't want to bring it to you. Um, there's things we can do at a very young age to avoid that. Preventative medicine, again. It's not the end of the world if that does happen to you one time, but if it does, if you have a puppy that has a tendency to want to not bring it back to you or run the other way or screw around and be a goofball, uh, then don't do that anymore. Um, there's things you can do. One of the things that's very common in developing young puppies is uh, retrieving in the hallway. Um, get a, you can get a ball, you can get a small bumper, you can get a knotted up sock, whatever it is, have fun with your puppy. Um, but if you do it in a way where the puppy has no other option, no other place to go but back to you, then you can develop good habits. So here you'll see me working cannon in the hallway. I've just got a knotted up sock and I'm tossing it down the end of the hallway. I'm working on some sit and stay and I'm calling his name to go get it a couple of times and just developing his desire to uh, retrieve and developing good habits. He's running down, grabbing the sock, having lots of fun, and bringing it straight back to me. All right, guys, I hope this was helpful. Get out and train your dogs. In video two, we're gonna talk about introductions. We're gonna talk a little bit more about uh, simple obedience. We're also gonna talk about the introduction to birds. We're gonna talk about the introduction to water retrieving. And we're gonna talk about the introduction to gunner-thrown marks. 